Hi friends. Do you like word games? I have a game on my phone that I like to play where I unscramble the letters to make words. Maybe you'd like to try to unscramble a word here with me today. I'll show you some mixed up letters and you can pause the video and try to unscramble those letters to make a word. Are you ready? Here are the letters. Well, did you guess the letters spelled Christian? Speaking of the word Christian, I know a song that spells the word Christian out along with some other words. Here are the lyrics and let me sing it for you. I am a C. I am a C-H. I am a C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. And I have C-H-R-I-S-T in my H-E-A-R-T. And I will L-I-V-E-E-T-E-R-N-A-L-L-Y. I am a C. I am a C-H. I am a C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. And I have C-H-R-I-S-T in my H-E-A-R-T. And I will L-I-V-E-E-T-E-R-N-A-L-L-Y. I am a C. Phew. You've got to get a pretty good breath to sing that song. Well, all this talk about the word Christian, what is a Christian? A Christian is someone who loves Jesus and follows his teachings. In today's Bible story, we're going to hear when the word Christian was first used to describe Jesus' followers. Stay tuned. Let's review our big picture question. What is the gospel? What is the gospel? The gospel is the good news that God sent his son Jesus into the world to rescue sinners. God's plan all along was to bless the world through his chosen people. Jesus was that blessing. His life, death, and resurrection made the way for sinners from every nation to be saved from sin and transformed into new creations that love and worship God. Last week we learned how God showed Peter that the gospel is for all people. God doesn't love only certain kinds of people. All people are made in his image, and he wants every person to hear the gospel, repent of sin, and be saved by faith. This week, we'll hear a story called Barnabas in Antioch. God had called Peter to tell everyone the good news about Jesus, no matter who they were or where they came from. So Peter shared the gospel not only with Jews, but with Gentiles. The Gentiles in Caesarea heard Peter's message and believed. God gave his Holy Spirit to these new believers, and they were baptized. Before long, the apostles and other believers throughout Judea heard that Gentiles had believed the good news about Jesus. They were surprised, so Peter shared about the vision God had given to him of the sheet of clean and unclean animals and his encounter with Cornelius. Peter explained that the gospel is for all people. Then the believers praised God and understood that Jesus had come for the Gentiles too. At the same time, believers who scattered after Stephen's murder had traveled to places like Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch of Syria. In those places, the believers only shared the gospel with the Jews. But some believers from Cyprus and Cyrene went to Antioch and preached the gospel to the Greeks, too. God was with them, and a large number of the Greeks believed the good news. The church at Jerusalem heard about these new believers, so they sent Barnabas to Antioch. Barnabas was a good man. He loved God and was full of faith and the power of the Holy Spirit. When Barnabas arrived, he saw that God was gracious to these believers. He was glad and encouraged them to keep following God. Even more people trusted in Jesus. Then Barnabas left Antioch and went to Tarsus to look for Paul. He found Paul and brought him back to Antioch. They stayed with the church in Antioch 
for a year teaching large crowds of people. Jesus' followers were first called Christians at Antioch. Even though some people tried to stop it, the gospel spread throughout the earth, not only to Jews, but also to Gentiles. The good news about Jesus is for everyone. God calls us to celebrate when others believe and help them know and love Jesus more. Let's see how much we remember using our questions and answers in envelopes. How did the Jewish believers react after Peter explained what happened with Cornelius? Do you remember? They glorified God and understood that Gentiles could be saved by faith too. Question number two. Who did the scattered believers share the gospel with? Do you remember? They shared only with the Jews. Question number three. In what city were believers first called Christians? Do you remember the name of the city? It was called Antioch. Question number four. Who can we share the gospel with? What do you think? Well, God's plan all along has been for people of all nations and tribes to come to faith. As a result, we can be sure that God wants us to share the gospel with everyone we meet. So the answer is everyone. Question number five. How do you feel when you think about sharing the gospel with someone? Well, how do you feel? Well, it's normal to feel nervous, afraid, or even uncertain. The Bible teaches us that the Holy Spirit, though, will give us power and help us by giving us the words we need to share the gospel. Remember, a negative reaction from the person listening doesn't mean we shouldn't stop sharing the gospel. And you're not responsible for how people respond. You're just responsible for sharing. Let the response be left up to God. Question number six, our last question. How can you encourage other believers? What do you think? Well, telling someone you care or thanking them for the ways they help you um, love Jesus are great ways to encourage others. Sometimes even just listening to others' problems is all it takes. And I'm sure you can think of other ways to encourage other believers. Barnabas went to Antioch to encourage believers. The gospel spread and the church grew. We can encourage others and spread the gospel too, which is in turn can grow the church. The gospel is the good news that God sent his son Jesus into the world to rescue sinners. God's plan is good reason to rejoice. Apart from him, we have no hope of salvation. In Jesus, we have hope, and a promise of eternal life. We know that God loves us and his plans cannot be stopped. Someday, all nations will rejoice in him when Jesus returns and destroys all evil. Let's sing our key passage. Mm -hmm. Let the hands be glad and the earth rejoice and let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. And let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Rejoice, be glad. The Lord reigns. Rejoice, be glad. The Lord reigns. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. And let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. And let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. First Chronicles 16 verse 31. First Chronicles 16 verse 31. Take it up first. Chronicles 16, verse 31. First Chronicles 16, verse 31. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. And let them say among the nations, The Lord reigns. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. And let them say among the nations, The Lord reigns. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. And let them say among the nations, The Lord reigns. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejo
heavens be glad and the earth rejoice and let them say among the nations the lord reigns rejoice be glad the lord reigns rejoice be glad the lord reigns let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice and let them say among the nations the lord reigns Ooh. once peter explained the vision he had the early church realized that keeping the gospel for just the jewish people wasn't god's plan and it wasn't too long that the church experienced more growth as gentiles began to hear the gospel and believe when the church leaders in Jerusalem heard about the new believers in places like Antioch, they decided to send someone to help them live the way Jesus wanted them to live. And that's when Barnabas went to Antioch to encourage believers. He even found Paul to help teach them and grow their faith. The Bible tells us that Barnabas' real name was Joseph. The nickname Barnabas means son of encouragement. Now, you'd have to be a really great source of encouragement for people to basically start calling you the encouraging guy. <laughs> but that was exactly what the early church needed. Christians at this time had faced a lot of persecution from people who do not believe the truth. You know, in the middle of hard times, we all need someone to encourage us and remind us how good God is. Even though some people tried to stop the gospel, the gospel spread throughout the earth, not only to Jews, but also to Gentiles. The good news about Jesus is for everyone. God calls us to celebrate when others believe and to help them know and love Jesus more. What about you? Have you believed the gospel? I sure hope so. I would love to help you. If you have any questions, you can check out our video on this channel called Gospel for Kids or contact me directly. If you have believed the gospel, I hope you are encouraging others by helping them grow and love Jesus more. If not, let me encourage you to do just that. Let's pray together. Oh God, I thank you so much for this story. Another good uh, Bible lesson to remind us of the things we need to do. Remind us of the things you have done in the early church and how you want us to continue to do those things here as we live out our lives before we uh, spend our lives in eternity with you. Lord, I, I pray that you will encourage us today. These times we live in are kind of tricky. Uh, sometimes they're scary, sometimes they're difficult, sometimes they're horrible. I pray that you will remind us, Lord, through your people and through your word that you are a good God and that you are still in control and you have a plan for our lives. And I pray that that will bring us strength and encouragement in these days. And I pray for us as we are, those of us who, who are Christians, I pray that we will encourage others and we will give them the same encouragement that we need and that we know your word gives and the truth of knowing who you are brings. Father, I pray for those who don't know Jesus I pray that you will open their eyes and ears and hearts to understand and believe the gospel so that they too will be saved, saved from the challenges of this world, saved from an eternity separated from you in a place called hell. I pray God for that. I pray that you will earnestly um, turn the hearts of those who don't know Christ to you. And I pray that we will live like believers not just act like believers, or, or rather, not just say that we're believers, but truly act like we're believers. Father, I also pray that you will um, just, uh, that this story has brought us encouragement today. Maybe we've needed an extra dose of encouragement, reminding us that you are a good God, that uh, the church needs encouragement and receives encouragement as we are in your word and with your people. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.